wonderful to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and we're glad that we see each one here, and, and uh, everybody's able to be in, in the church and be with the church and assemble together. And it's such a blessing this morning to think of the the privilege that we have this morning to come and to gather together to hear God's word and sing songs of praise to Him. And I know some so many times I'm not as thankful for this privilege as I should be, but I know this this morning as I sing in that song, I shall know Him. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I will, I will. And uh, I thank this morning that each one that's here that can sing that ought to shout for, for glory. Amen. And those that can't should cry for help. Mm -hmm. Because listen, uh, there those that, that don't see his face are doomed. And uh, we need to be in prayer for one another and for our brothers and sisters in other churches that uh, we could all be together one day and uh, really have a fellowship. So this morning with that thought, we're going to go to chapter 17 in the book of John, which took a little bit on 15 a couple of weeks ago. We're going to, go to John 17, 1 this morning and talk to you a little bit about uh some of the things, some of the words, I read some of the words to you this morning. And if we can only, you know, if we can only read a few of the words to uh, out of God's word, it's true, and if Amen. we can be a blessing, if we can be a blessing to others that are be watching it today and others that time, we 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 have done a whole lot to uh, please the Lord. And so, in John chapter seventeen, the first verse says here. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also glorify thee. Amen. We want to see just a little bit this morning in chapter and verse 12. Uh, I want to read you just a little bit something here about uh, what Jesus said here in verse 12. And <clears throat> verse 43, I believe it is. Uh, 12, yeah, 1223, I'm sorry. Page 12, verse 23, he says here, and Jesus answered them, and of course this is, in the background of this is where these uh, people uh, from Basidia, Basidia come to uh, to see Christ. And uh, so they asked Philip about this, and Philip come to, and telling Andrew, and Andrew and Philip tells Jesus, so here we see that Jesus is already, already uh, aware of his hour is close and his time has come. And he says here, uh, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Amen. Verily, I, verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth it abideth alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Amen. So he that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it. Now, I want to bring the thought to your mind this morning. We spoke some last couple of weeks ago on Sunday on, a, on the garden and how that uh, things were done to the plant and all this. Well, think upon this this morning when he says the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And of course the glorifying this morning was him being put on the cross and dying for the sins of the world. That was one of his glorifications to God and God glorified him by presenting him in time many times and all of the things that Jesus did he got. He glorified himself, and he raised the dead. He healed the sick, and 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 he, he helped those that were stutters and things of this nature. But he did all of these things. But now he says here, he uses a good example. There at the how the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. Now he's talking about his death. Mm -hmm. And his burial and his resurrection. Amen. And you think upon this as you as you can use this in, in your everyday life as an example. Listen, when you uh, have a little flower garden or when you have a big garden or whatever kind of plant you're planting, uh, seed. 
Listen, when you go out there and you drop a little plant, a little seed, you have taken it from this place where it had been all a long time, typifying that Jesus walked upon this earth 33 years. Mm -hmm. Now, when you take that little seed and you drop it in the ground, automatically you cover it with dirt, which they did this with Jesus when they put him in the tomb. But notice this thing here. For a few days, like Jesus laid in the ground for three days, a few days and that old outside of that seed, like our flesh, rots, deteriorates, and up forth through that comes that little new sprout. That little thing that is this glorified body. Amen. And listen, it will it will be that at that time when Jesus says, "Come up hither," and when uh, when He calls us all out of the grave. Listen, that is a, an example that He used, and to me, it means a whole lot more because I seen it. I seen it clearer today or yesterday than I have in a long time. But He says here. Notice what happens. What what he says about this little seed. He says, here, if it's not planted, if it's not planted, if it's not put in the ground, it abideth alone. And here we see Jesus Christ walking up on this earth some 33 years, abiding alone. Mm -hmm. Because he had been with the Father, and now he is uh, here alone, and this is the example that he's using. So he says, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, for that is our 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 glory, our glory in this morning is to die, and to die in the will of the Lord, and to be resurrected, and to be with him in glory. And he said in that song that we sing this one, I shall know his face. Amen. And this morning, that is our condition this morning. He says, but if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. Now, when it dies and that little sprout comes up typifying the glorified body, it brings more fruit uh, to the Lord and to the Lord Jesus Christ. Plus also this morning when it, when it dies and it's through salvation, listen, it brings more fruit to those that are around him, around them, and, and glorifies the Father, and it can speak to others and, and tell them about this. And so this is the same way in a, in a little garden when you see that sprout come up, it brings forth fruit, and you, that fruit is, is passed around, or you can take the seed from that fruit, replant it, and it just keeps multiplying and keeps multiplying. And that this morning, people, is what God is pleased in. It's when, when I, we have these congregations in the churches the, uh, this morning that we can come together, that we can sing praises and glory to Him, that we can tell one another, we can fellowship with one another, and we can be uh, encouraged, uplifted, uh, regenerated to a point or are built up and we can go away saying it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. And listen, it's like gasoline you put in a car when it's just about out. You pour that gas in there and the old car is ready to go for another mile or two down the road. It's the same way with us this morning. When we come in here, we're down and out, don't feel well, the devil's rolled us hard, but listen, we hear God's word, we read, and we think upon these things, and the Holy Spirit comes and deals with us and speaks to us and, and encourages our heart. Amen. And we're, we're back like, hey, I'm ready for another mile or two down the road. And so this is, this is something I wanted to read to you, and, and hopefully you'll get a, a blessing out of it. And here he said in verse 25, I'm going to read this. He that lo loveth his life shall lose it, which this is the way the plant is, and this is the way Jesus is, and, 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 and he that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it un unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor, 
Now, he says, my soul is troubled, and what I shall say, Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Yeah. So Jesus is talking to the Father there, and, and he's praying, and he's saying, Father, the hour has come. And, and, and like uh, we was reading there uh, in the... At the, the chapter 12 there uh, about the the people that come and they said we would see Jesus we would see Jesus and they tell it to Philip and Philip passes the word on but listen this morning that should be our words coming out of our mouth each day I would see Jesus I want to see Jesus I want to hear about Jesus I want to know him better and so this morning it's an encouragement to me, and it should be an encouragement to you to hear these words, I want to see Jesus. Amen. Because listen, people, this world has not got nothing to offer us. Amen. Uh, I mean, it, it, all it's got is a rough time. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, in verse 2 of chapter 17, back in our lesson, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. Amen. Now this this morning is so full, is so full and so rich with this with this verse here this morning. And so many people does not understand what it's saying. You're right. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know what they what what they are reading. And he says here again. He says that he should give eternal life to as many as. Thou has given him. Amen. And, and and this also speaks of the ones that Jesus was given to help him here. And it also speaks in the Bible of those that was given to Jesus. When they hear that word priest, and when we read it where they wrote it down, we have the same opportunity for eternal life. And so it, it's like the little plant with the seed. It just keeps on going and going and going. And the devil is out there with sickles and, and things trying to cut everything down and mash everything and destroy everything. But listen, he, he's, he's fighting a losing battle. And uh, it does me good this morning to tell him because he, he rides me all the time and aggravates me and tries to not to, to, to discourage me instead of encourage me. But here he says uh, again, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. Now, I believe in, I want to read something to you. If you would turn over to uh, verse chapter 6. 6 and verse 37. Uh, look at 35. 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But, in verse 36, But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Yeah, okay. Uh, for, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which he has sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose none, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Again, we're reading in chapter 17 here, and this is what this is what Jesus is talking about in verse 2, for he gives eternal life to as many uh, as, as he gives Jesus. And then he says uh, that he, this is eternal life. And this morning, uh, people, again, it, it's, a sad, it's a sad thing. And I wish I could uh, read something that would open the eyes of all, of, even of God's people that he's chosen, that they wouldn't have to go through this time until the Holy Spirit speaks to them. But it can't. And those that, are, that will never have their eyes open, it's a sad affair. Amen. And, and I can't. You know, I can't say, well, that's a bad thing because it's God's will. That's it. And he has 
He has the power to do it, and he does it. And I'm just so thankful this morning that he has opened my eyes to the, the Spirit. And, and listen, I understand, and I know what eternal life is. And I know that once he saves, he saves with a, a, an eternal, eternity forever. And there's no falling away. And Amen. so we should this morning be happy this morning that we are, if you would take it, locked in that box of security to where that no one can unlock it and destroy us, take it out, can do away with it. We're there, we're there, and we're there until we meet at Jesus' feet and when he lets us see his face. So it's, it's a wonderful thing this morning to know these things. And he said, verse 3 of our lesson, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And so he was speaking to the disciples and, and to the ones that they would speak to and, and, and on and on and on. But he says here, this is eternal life. And so people, people want to uh, disagree with you when you say that you're saved with an everlasting salvation. But I know John 3... Uh, John 3 9 says that, that you're, you're bought with a price. I mean, you're, uh, uh, I, can't, I can't remember, people. Ain't that awful? John 3. I'm going to read. I'll read to you. I'm, I'm, just, I'll read to you. I'm, I'm sure somebody can avoid it for me. But John 3. Oh, <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can a man be. Can see these things. Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knoweth not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, we speak that we do. I'm still not on the right one. John 3, what is it? I wanted to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I lost it. John 3, 5. John, <laughs> but anyway. It says that that which is born of God cannot sin. First oh, John, devil, I got you. First John 3, 9. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it is first John. But listen, the devil's interfering with me this morning. But anyway, the Lord bless and give me that to remember. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful this morning that I can remember it. I can tell you that, that, that you cannot lose that what you have that Jesus Christ died for. And, and you can be saved for, with an everlasting salvation. He said, verse, uh, verse uh, 9, uh, for verse 3, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. Amen. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Jesus talking to God in prayer. He says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Glor glorifying is, I, I, I looked up best I could find one, is to honor and to praise greatly. And so this morning, Jesus is saying, honor me, glorify me. And he says, I'm going to glorify you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is talking about when he died on the cross, he would glorify God. And so many, so many people didn't understand that, but he glorified God. He, he did the will of God. He done the, the thing that God sent him here to do. He glorified him that those that God has chosen could have eternal life. Amen. And so this is why he's saying these words about glorifying. And, and, and Jesus was glorified by God time and time again, as I earlier spoke to. So he said here, I have glorified thee on the earth, verse 4, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do, which was to, to preach the gospel and to lead the 12 uh, or the 11 when it was wound up and have this word uh, for that it could be wrote. He says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, Glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Amen. And listen, he's talking none other thing than about when Jesus 
before he came to this earth was with the Father, and he said, glorify me with this that I enjoyed while I was with you. And he said, Father, I'm getting ready to come back because he said, the time is now. And so uh, he said here, uh, I, I, the, the, this glory that I had with thee before the world was. And I want to read something to you if I can not mess it up this morning. In John 14, 1420, I believe it is. <clears throat> All right. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Now he is this morning talking about himself being sent, and also after he was uh, called back to glory, he, he said, if I don't go, I cannot send the Holy Spirit. And so now, instead of, Instead of him being here, the Holy Spirit is here in a great way, and he is the one that speaks to your hearts. He's the one that that uh, talks to you of a night when you're laying there and rolling and tumbling and when when nothing don't seem right. He's the one that's speaking to you, and you ought to holler as loud as you could because that the Holy Spirit is dealing with you because, listen, that's good evidence that you're a, a, a one of God's chosen. Amen. So don't get upset when you get to rolling and tumbling or when you get out there and all of this thing comes upon you and you wonder, get to wondering about what I should do and how I should do it and what's this all about. Listen, he says, just be still. Mm -hmm. Just be still and listen. And people, that's the most important thing I can tell you about this morning is when, 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 when the Holy Spirit comes to you, just be still and listen mm -hmm. and, 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 and depend upon what he's saying to you because, listen, it's the truth and he will, it will guide you into the way of, of, of the Lord. So uh, he said in uh, verse 20, uh, 22, the, then the disciples looked one upon another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved, Simon Peter, therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it was, it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? Now here we're talking now about Judas Iscariot. Jesus answered, he, he, it is he to whom I give the sock when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sock, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after this, Simon, so, after the sock, Simon entered, Satan entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake these things. So this is another thing here that Jesus knew that was was fixing to happen because he said to, he told Judas this care and of course we read on down here a little bit more and they they thought when he told him do what you do quickly that he's going out to buy for the poor but he was going out to get this gang together to crucify Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and so he said what you do do quickly and so he knew that his time was at hand again and then in verse 31 therefore when he was going out Jesus said now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in Him. And so again, this glorification works both ways, and, and, and God was glorified in heaven by Jesus Christ doing what He did in this world and going to the cross, taking all the punishment, all the things that had, had been put upon Him, and He goes willingly, He gives His life freely, for you and for me and for all that will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so this morning, this is a, uh, a very, very uh, good lesson to learn. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this, let me read just a little bit more. Now I'll, I'll be through. But now notice here, as he said in verse 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested or revealed thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. Now they have known that. 
All things whatsoever thou hast given me are thee. For I have given unto them the word which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in this. And so again, there was there was a glorification. Uh, and he says in verse 11, I am now no more, I am no more, I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep thou thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, and they, and that they may be as we are. So Jesus again praying for his disciples before he left, and he said, "Keep." It. And of course, I, I I know we did. I know we did because uh, we see too much uh, writings and things of this this nature. And so uh, Jesus kept them. I mean, God kept them because it was a it was a it was a permanent thing. It was salvation. So uh, again, I want to encourage you that. Uh, that are not saved. Uh, you've got a world to lose and a glory to gain. Or you've got a world of uh, 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 fire uh, to lose and you can a uh, home in glory to gain. And you need to you need to be for sure about this thing because uh, if you live to be 105, one day death's going to come knocking at your door. Right. And you're going to die. And uh, these younger children that are coming up, they need to understand these things. And these older ones that uh, are are still not saved, they need to realize that they they need to be saved. Because I say, and I don't know, you know, people say, well, I said I'm I'm young, I got years and years and years to go, but you don't know that. And so. A lot, of them, a lot of people die young. A lot of people die young unsaved. Mm -hmm. The same way with old. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this is a lesson that uh, I want to try to present to you. And, and I hope that uh, others that are hearing it, uh, the Holy Spirit will take it usable for, for God's glory and honor. And we thank you so much and ask that you continue praying for us. And thank you for listening to the lesson and being patient with me because sometimes uh, sometimes things ain't where they should be and sometimes Junior Page forgets so pray for us thank you so much